Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, this was uh, it's distributed generation. It goes under that name. Mm-hmm. But then when the uh, the uh, station is tied to the grid, but when the grid doesn't need electricity, then the uh, uh, you make hydrogen. Use the electricity to make hydrogen. And then uh, you have hydrogen so that you can schedule electricity to go into the grid. Uh, that's a proposal. I, I don't think that that's actually being implemented anywhere. Along with hydrogen vehicles being developed, and there's a lot of people spending a lot of money on that. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, you only need then what, another 30,000 wind turbines, I suppose, to <laughs> instead of 17. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I did have a little bit to say on global warming, but I noticed when I looked at your schedule that you have some excellent speakers uh, coming up who will talk about global warming. So I'll just uh, leave this here. I don't think there's anything else I need to say about it. Uh, scientific consensus is that global warming is real and that human activity contributes to it. And let it go at that. Uh, if you have questions, then you can ask. Uh, Amy, is there a speaker coming in next week on global warming? Uh, I, I don't. Not He'll be in Waynesboro, yeah, on April 8th. So if you're interested in that, you can pick up a full brochure, and they're listed on the back. Um, but the one thing I would mention about that is that we had a snow day. So the Visions for Rural Design, which Dewey Thorbeck is going to be giving, it's actually been moved to April 15th in Houston. So the location's still the same, but it will be April 15th rather than the... January 29th, which was a very snowy day. <laughs> and um, we had just passed out some um, survey forms. If you would please fill those out and just drop them in the black um, container on your way out, that would be great. And we really appreciate your coming tonight. And if you have more questions, um, certainly I'll stick to around. Ask or, mm-hmm. um, that would be great. And pick up a brochure. And if you're interested in more information on this topic, we have some books to check out. And you can go to the Selco website, and there are more uh, materials there, and a bibliography or additional resources are listed there on on that page. So, and the other thing I was going to mention is, if you see programs in here you're interested in but may have already occurred, they will be on the Selco website. So if you go to this, it's on the brochure www.selco.info, and then click on Rural Sustainability on the sidebar. You can view the programs. And we'll get them there in in their entirety. So thank you for coming. We we'll also have on the Silco website the videos that um, the first two are on the Silco website. So you can go there and view the first two that are in that brochure. And they'll mm-hmm. be coming on as quickly as we can get them edited and mm-hmm. and out there. So we, and thank you to Bonnie. We appreciate that. And thank you, Mr. Schwartz. We really thank appreciate you. your presentation. That was very interesting. And oh, my pleasure. Glad to be here tonight. Well, thank you. And how, how, would, how do you think communities go about changing their land use philosophies? You know, we were, we kind of got structured into this is residential, this is commercial. We don't want the two mixed together. How do you change that way of thinking to get communities to accept changing their well, allowing a convenience store right in the middle of a residential neighborhood, I guess is what I'm asking. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, I know in Mankato we had a, a visioning process couple of years ago called Envision 2020, and we're not to the stage where we're uh, talking to the developers and getting them to think this way, but through that envisioning process, uh, we got a good number of the folks involved, and there were maybe 200 people involved, uh, to buy into the idea of renewable energy. Uh, And they really hadn't been thinking about that beforehand. So if there's uh, are there if there are community groups that talk about the future of the community? You know, my experience is that that's a good place to to get started. 
something like a review of a land use plan, <clears throat> something in that development progression? Uh, sure, yeah, I'm uh, not an expert on uh, city government. In fact, I've been, <laughs> I've, been, I've been trying to get a hold of our mayor to make a presentation before the Mankato City Council on the need for a peak oil task force there, and I just, he, he won't return my calls. I, I'm not sure why, if he's just real busy. It's not popular. It doesn't get close. Yeah, that's true. But if there are occasions for people in the community to come together and talk about issues of, uh, no, is there an envisioning process uh, for for Casson, maybe? I don't think they've even talked about that yet. I was hoping the city administrator would come, but he must have had other plans tonight. Um, that oh, would have been a question to post to him. I think it'll be an uphill battle to get the governor to sign on to it. Since they had to kind of twist his arm just to get a tax increase on gasoline, I, I don't know that. Well, uh, peak oil. I, I think we're I think we're more comfortable just ignoring it. You know, I hear from people all the time. There's more oil in the ground than we've ever pumped. You know, you hear those you hear those urban legends. I guess. Yeah. I'd like to uh -huh. believe that. I think. You'd like to believe it, but the, the evidence just doesn't support that. Uh, I'm, I'm a physicist, so I like to look and see what the evidence is for any assertions that are made. But I do know that Pawlenty, Governor Pawlenty, you know, I'm not talking politics, but I'm just saying that he's been very supportive of renewable energy in Minnesota in general, and uh, the governor was behind those two acts that were passed in 2007. Uh, I don't know how he feels about the peak oil bill. I haven't heard anything about that. Where does nuclear fit in? It doesn't. Really, it's not really renewable, is it? Uh, no, it isn't. No, you need uranium for that, and uranium is a non-renewable resource as well. And I think it's uh, against the law to put in new nuclear plants in Minnesota right now. Uh, but... <clears throat> If you ask me my opinion, uh, and there are pluses and minuses to all forms of energy, but if uh, somebody said to me, your choice is to put in a nuclear power plant uh, or a coal-fired power plant for your electricity, I'd say do the nuclear. No question about it, none whatsoever. And the reason is that with coal, you're producing all that carbon dioxide that goes into the atmosphere and creates a global problem. And with nuclear, there are problems. Uh, there's a problem with the disposal of the waste, but it's not a global problem like uh, you get from burning coal. As a uh, <clears throat> do you see any, any um, hope for efficiencies in, let's say, uh, Photovoltaic cells are to, to convert sun rays into directly into electricity. Is there any hope for you know? They, it, it's a, if they got better and cheaper and more efficient, that'd be mm -hmm. a wonderful thing. But is it, you think it'll ever happen? Uh, I, I think it might. I, I think that uh, photovoltaics are fairly expensive now, uh, but the hope is always that as you continue to work on a technology, the price will come down. Mm -hmm. um, I am not. Uh, familiar with uh, I haven't followed the technology for photovoltaics so I, just, I guess what I was wondering LEDs are another thing that would be a fantastic savings on electricity if they could you know if they could get this LED technology through it's like one tenth of uh, the electricity needed for regular lights mm -hmm. right or, and it's creeping along but I don't hear that it's <clears throat> or compact fluorescence are uh, really uh, yeah. mm -hmm. and in our house we're gradually replacing our light bulbs mm -hmm. with compact fluorescence so my wife has some in our closet whenever a light bulb burns out then mm -hmm. it gets replaced so in a few years they'll all be all be that way mm -hmm. and they're and I know in Katzen, if, if you bring in <coughs> a regular light bulb they will give you the city will give you 
the really? light bulb to replace it. So for every one you bring in, they give you, and I don't know if there's a cap. I don't know if I've heard a cap on that, but but all you have to do is bring it. Oh. And you bring they it? exchange one for one is what I was told. And I don't know if there's like five per household. They hold it off at. you, know you got to bring in the bulb. Do you know where you take it? To the city hall. City hall. Hmm. I'll have to try that. Yep. So I know that's already there. That if you have energy efficient appliances, you take that, and then because mm -hmm. your electricity comes from here, and then you get a rebate mm -hmm. also, and that's automatic for any of them. You bring the Star Energy um, sticker right. or whatever. If you upgrade to a more right, efficient appliance. More efficient, and then they give you, I would want to say, two or $300. I forget what we got off of our um, furnace and air conditioner oh. back there. Hmm. And then I think we got something from... Whatever the other, I know there were two places they got money from for, for upgrading. So that's already here that they do want to be more energy efficient, especially since we have our own power plant here that we do our, our electricity. Well, we have our own company, but we're not. But we don't make not any the power plant. I'm sorry, it's a company. Yeah. And so they're trying to be more efficient, and they're gradually like to do all the city <coughs> buildings over, you know, refit right. these, and so we're more not um, using the electricity that these generate. But it's going to be over time as a process.